YouTube, what is good? It's your man Rib from Doing Film Things. Today we're going to talk about the essential film holder, and that's basically what you see right here. There's two parts to it. Well, there's multiple parts to it, but this typically goes on there. If you don't know what this is, check out this video in the link above right here. That'll describe to you kind of what the whole product is and my initial thoughts when I did my first review. Here I want to talk to you about what I've learned about this product for after using it for about six months. Um, in short, I really like this product. Let's go ahead and start with that. Um, you know, it kind of does exactly what it's supposed to do. It's not complicated. It's not fussy. It's made out of really durable, like lightweight plastic. And yeah, I just, I honestly like overall really love using the product. Um, there were no surprises and I got exactly what I was hoping for when I bought it. So since then, there are a couple things you kind of have to learn about this product as you go, even though it's kind of simple to use. First and foremost is that when you're handling negatives, um, it's actually best for you to scan your negatives whole. So what I mean by that is, um, you know, you have your negative after developing and it's one long negative, which I'll show you here. We've got a roll of 120. So this entire roll right here, um, it's much easier to scan it as is entirely because basically if you have multiple segments, you're going to have to fidget to get it in there. And the problem is when you put this negative in here like this, you know, it has an entry point And then as you slide it across, sometimes it'll kind of rub up against the other entry point on the other side. And that's because the slit is very thin and that's intentional because that's what keeps your negative flat. In order to combat this issue, what is recommended to do is that you actually cut your negative on one end and make it pointy. So if you look at this negative now, it's got a point here. And that basically makes it so that when you slide it into the holder, as you normally do, it'll very easily just go right in. And you see that it didn't rub up against anything and now you can just pull it through and it works perfectly. Um, you know, that's not a huge problem. I don't think it's a deal breaker in any way, um, but it just means that when you're gonna scan, you definitely wanna scan your negative first hole like this. And most people probably do that anyways. Um, I oftentimes don't do that because I actually like to sometimes print my negatives in the dark room before scanning at all. It's just this interesting exercise of not seeing a digital version of your image and going straight into the dark room. Problem with that is when you put this in a negative holder and in your enlarger, you need to cut it. Cause if you don't, you're gonna have all of that kind of drooping down towards your paper and hanging from the enlarger. So I would obviously cut this into strips, let's say of, of two or three images. And then that's what I would put in the holder and that's more comfortable for printing. So the problem is once I do that, and let's say I have segments of like that much length, when I'm trying to go back in here, I'm gonna have that original problem that I mentioned, but you have to multiply that by the number of pieces. So that problem is a bit annoying and you kind of have to account that into your workflow. So again, for most of you, that's not gonna be an issue because you can just cut one end like I did here and then slide your negatives through and scan and it's all good. But then in the future, after you've cut your negatives, if you wanna go back and scan, it's 100% possible, but you're gonna to have to kind of like fight with it just a little bit to get it through that slot. You can with the glove kind of push the negative down just a little bit while you push it and it usually works. Just want to be honest there because it is kind of annoying, but that's basically the biggest complaint I have about this. And it's definitely not a deal breaker. It just kind of, it is what it is. I don't know how easy it is to scan individual segments with other holders. So, you know, maybe someone in the comments can tell me what the experience they have with the, the more expensive ones or the newer versions of holders that are out there. But I've assumed this is probably going to be an issue with any holder you use. Beyond that, I don't think there's any kind of other major thing that you need to know about this specifically. In terms of scanning in general with DSLR, whether using this or whether using any other holder, I find that reflections of ambient light are usually an issue. And there's kind of two things you need to account for. One is once you have your holder on your light source, as you see right here, so that's all my light source. What I find that is important is that you actually block off all of this unused um, space because all of that light is gonna be reflecting towards your camera and it can start to cause reflections on your actual camera. So imagine this was a digital camera and obviously it's not, it's my Pentastic 7. When this is pointing downwards like this, all this light that's kind of open is gonna be reflecting off of the lens, it's gonna be reflecting off of the camera, and then it reflects back onto your negative. And the bigger the negative, the more likely it is that you're gonna have a reflection that's gonna be there. And sometimes it's not noticeable if your negative has a lot of busy stuff and there's a lot of, you know, let's say leaves and trees, you know, stuff. But when you have really kind of blank spaces on your negative, whether it's a wall or the sky or something that's very kind of monotonous in color, um, especially things that are very bright, um, you're gonna see the reflections very blatantly. And when you invert the negative in software, it's gonna be very apparent that something's going on. So covering and masking off unused portions of your light is extremely important. The other thing I recommend doing, which is probably obvious, is to turn off the lights. 
which I think probably everybody does. Sometimes I do want to scan in the daytime and that becomes kind of a problem because ambient light in the room could be an issue. Uh, what I would suggest you do in that case is that, again, if you have your digital camera like this pointing downwards, um, and it's going to be on a tripod, it's going to be sturdy, you don't have to hold it. Above it, you can kind of go over it with something dark, whether that's a shirt or a bed sheet or something, something that's dark. And that basically will block off ambient light from bouncing around. That usually helps a lot too. Um, it works really, really well when, the, when it's kind of dark in the room, but in the daytime, you might still have to fight with some reflections. Ultimately, you're going to have to kind of convert your negative and see what the deal is. Um, but generally, yeah, that applies to any kind of scanning situation, not just the essential film holder. Ultimately, do I recommend this product? I say for sure. Um, I was probably one of the first people that bought this that I knew, and it was recommended to me by one of my other friends. And basically, I didn't really know what to do, but I figured it wasn't too expensive and I didn't have any other solution anyways. So I bought it and there's been no looking back. I basically use it for everything. Obviously, this works at 35 as well, using the other holder attachment that you have right here. And now I'm very happy with it. Yo, what's good? So I need to fill in an extra 20 seconds to get to eight minutes. So here we go. First and foremost, go check out my podcast, link in the bio. Uh, it's called the New Classic Film Photography Podcast and a lot of cool guests on there, a lot of new episodes every single week. So go check it out. Second of all, um, I'm posting a video soon about my Pentax X7 experience after having gotten it repaired. So I'll give you some information as to what went wrong and what the state of the camera is now. And finally, of course, the Intrepid and Larger you saw on Instagram and, and one of my previous videos that I've got that. I've been printing with that recently and I'm not going to tell you how it's going because I want you to watch the future videos. But go ahead and make sure you check those out. All right, now back to the original video. So these have become very, very popular recently. And because of that, there's a bit of a wait. Um, so I definitely recommend if you're looking to buy one, you should order it ASAP because they're only going to keep getting more popular. And there's a wait on these because they're all hand assembled by the owner of the company. So, you know, there's really good quality control with them. Every single one is inspected. This isn't just kind of flying in from another country, um, mass produced in a factory or something like that. The individual components are actually assembled by the owner himself and by his team. So you can trust that there's good quality in this. Um, so generally, yeah, definitely jump on this. I do have an affiliate link down below if you're interested in buying this. So if you want to support the channel, go ahead and use my link to buy it. I'd really appreciate that. But in general, if you're a DSLR scanner, if you're looking to get into it, you definitely need to get yourself a holder because putting negatives directly on your light source is going to cause Newton rings. And it's also just annoying because you, then you have to hold down your negative somehow. And it's just, it's, it's work that you shouldn't have to do with this. It's a one-time expense and it's an investment. And I'm going to have this forever. Like this isn't, this is basically, you know, it's not indestructible, but there's nothing here that can break. There are no moving parts. There's nothing fancy. There's literally very simple engineering. And therefore you could assume that you'll have this for a long time and you're not going to need to repair it. You are not need to send it back to get a replacement. None of that. It just, it is what it is. All right, y'all. That's what I got for this week. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and leave me a like. And of course, subscribe if you want to learn more about scanning. I've got a playlist right here that covers all the stuff that I use for scanning. So go ahead and check that out. To the next video, y'all. Peace.